Hey everybody. Uh, today's adventure is going to be to uh, get my swamp cooler or evaporative coolers uh, ready to go for summer. It's going to get up into the 80s this week. As you can see on my roof, I've got two of them. One on the addition and one in the main house. I'm going to go through the process of uh, getting ready for uh, summertime. Stay tuned. Okay. I'm going to take off the, the cover. And this is basically how it's set up. It's tucked in down below. And then it goes across through here. Take this off real quick. Do it for the other one. I'm going to take the dampers out. Be with you in a second. Okay. And I got the, the south side off. That's the access to the pump and the damper. Let's see if I can get this out. Show you guys the damper. <laughs> There it is. That prevents the flow from going inside the house while the, um, the heater's on, the furnace. So, anyway, got to do it to the other one and get all these pads off and clean them up. Put new pads in and reinstall it. I'm going to have to take off the ropes on, on this one. They help keep everything nice and snug. The covers don't fly off. So That's what I'm going to do. And here's a beautiful view from the top of my house. Beautiful Santa Fe. All right, I've uh, taken off the cover. I'm gonna get on the damper on this one for the uh, for the uh, family room, and the damper is underneath here. I need to remove that screw to pull this off. Do that here in a second. Okay, I've removed that screw. I'm gonna take this off. Just kind of lift it. here slide it out and there's the down draft so I'll just put this back mid the cover and it'll work right. I'm gonna show some parts make sure everything's unplugged because this one is tied directly into the electricity this is the only place you can unplug it you don't want to get zapped because we're going to be putting water in a while a couple hours probably there's the drain plug overflow this is the float, water supply that's been cut. I'll have to put a new one in and take it down to the porch. Um, fitting for oil. Got to oil these things, make sure they don't squeak, make sure they work good, keep the bearings in good shape. There's another one on this side over here. You got to check the belts, make sure they're in good shape. That looks like it's in good shape. So um, next I'm going to get all the pads, get them down on the porch, clean them up. Take out the old pads and put new ones in and then reconnect all the plumbing and get everything going. It should be loads of fun. <laughs> Not my favorite thing to do, but you got to do it. Talk to you in a while. One thing I forgot to mention is when you're up here, if you have a pro panel roof like mine, you want to go around and make sure all these little screws are in tight. Some of them you'll see them sticking up. I just had to screw one back in and this, I just used this. It's just a one quarter inch socket fits perfect on the pro panel anyway it's a good thing to do is get them every year they come up bye all right so i'm down here on the, on the slab i gotta work on these first thing you gotta do is pull these out you know they come out take these off and then you can pull the pad off then i'm going to scrub them with a wire brush I'm going to scrub the frame, okay? Get all the water water stains off or um, the mineral deposits. It's not too bad. Our water isn't too hard. So, a okay. little tip. This is the main house. This one, to take the, this out. You do the sides first. <laughs> not one-handed, though. <laughs> you know, you pull this out this mount and then you can do the ends by lifting it in the center pull it up okay pull the sides out now you just pull it about right here there you go
Dakota. And um, set these aside. Close the old pad out. Check it in that place where you don't mind getting dirty. And you do the next ones. That's how you do it. <clears throat> I'm gonna show you what I do for brushing it off. See the, the water stains are here. Actually there's out of it's just a just some slime, some swamp stuff. So you get that off with the wire brush. You know, sometimes you get a little bit right in here too. But mainly it's uh, it's down in this area. And on the bottom side as well. Let's see. So I'm be scrubbing those off with the wire brush. So you have to just get a regular old wire brush. Start scrubbing. And they're cool. So the water sits. And then up in here. And then in the, in the place where the water goes in. So I need to do that too. And I've been doing this for 20 plus years and uh, my swamp coolers are still working. Actually, this is the newer one, so it's only about 13 years old. These are the old boys. Still works, haven't had to replace them, but they're getting there. Talk to you in a little bit. Okay, so <clears throat> we'll clean them all up. These ones are clean, these ones are clean, everything's looking good. And um, put a new pad in this little guy here, and I just need to put this together. And I want to make sure that it stays wet, so kind of go, I tend to kind of pull them a little down near the bottom. But you tuck them in real nice. Um, if you can't get them uh, quite the size that you measure from the width and length, um, you can get them a little bit longer and then just fold them in. This one, if, you know, just the plastic alone, the netting, I fold it under. But you can actually fold the whole thing and i'm going to do that with these larger ones over here because i had to get a 29 by 29 and that's a little too big on one one length so just thought i'd show you that one thing i uh, i need to let you know is i've all the years i've tried different kinds of pads and the blue synthetic ones the green ones and a lot of them they just don't seem to work good but these aspen snow cools these things are the bomb. They cool great. So uh, they're a little messy, but it's okay. They work great. I like them. I highly recommend them. I got the new pads up here, and I'm gonna be cleaning it out. And all, the, all the old stuff out. Goes out through the drain plug there. Just gotta go around and around a few times, and you'll you'll get it out. I'm going to do it to both of them and then put the plug in and hook everything up. Talk to you in a bit. Okay. This is how you install the drain plug. Put this in like so. That's the overflow. And this goes underneath, tightened up. And so there's a washer right up in here. So it'll seal it real nice. That's how you do it. Okay. So now I'm going to connect the, the tubing and it's going to run across and down in front of the garage. And I've got a faucet there I hook it up to for the water supply. So, important thing is, is you uh, put it in through here. Whoops. Put it in through here. Ah, uh, sorry. Like this. And you stick it on there real good. I'll stick it on there better. I've uh, run the line. Goes across the roof and down over to the faucet to the water supply and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to fill the basin I'm going to fill the basin to get this float to get the float up in, in the proximate area because it takes a long time to fill up through the float so I'm going to give it a a good fill up before we do that okay I have installed all but one of the panels with the new, fill, with the new pads I've filled the basin up pretty close to where it needs to be. 
All I need to do now is finish uh, tying up all the, the plumbing, get the water going, make sure my uh, my spider is working. That's that little uh, spreader thing. It distributes the water on top of each of the pads on all the four corners. I'll be doing that next. This guy is ready. Hooked everything up. Put water in the basin. The float is working. Just need to do the plumbing. Got it going down to the back porch and there's a water uh, faucet back there for the water supply. I'll hook everything up, make sure everything runs, then I'll tie everything in all the way. Alright, while I turn on the AC on low, the pump is going, the motor is going, the fan's going, but there's no water really coming out. It's just dripping. So it's plugged. Something's up. And then I get my little metal drain tool. I'll be back. All right, this is my spider rotor rooter. I'm gonna run this uh, up in the spider and try to clean it out. We'll see if it helps. Okay, so I found the problem. This was plugged, and so was that. This little guy was full of a bunch of crap. So I got it out, I think. I'm gonna reconnect it and try it again. Oh, I fixed it. Got water coming out of all of them. Seems to be working good. That's the one problem about this uh, this Aspen pad. It does clog things up. You gotta be able to clean up your spider with uh, tools like this and be able to understand that you can take that thing apart and buy new ones if you have to. So that's it. It's good. You can see the, the black line, the water line coming down. It's underneath the porch. Got it coming down around this pole and hooked up right here to this guy. So that's the one I have mine hooked up. So I got all the plumbing going, uh, checked the, all the uh, evaporative coolers are all working good up top. One thing I want to go over is um, if you have a gas furnace, a, a, or maybe any furnace, now's the time to take, you know, unplug that sucker and Make sure the gas is off. I've already turned the gas off on mine and the power is unplugged from the outlet in case of any surges or anything. And then and that dude, uh, there's a little off button, on and off button. I'm going to get in there and turn that to off. And that's a safety thing that I do every time. And then in the winter time, you know, when it gets cold, I do just the opposite. Get this one going. Maybe I'll put a little, a little video together. Bye. It's been close to 15 minutes, somewhere around there. Uh, it's dropped down to 74, so it's dropping down a little bit, but this is the main house. It's a big area to cool down, so let's check on the other way. Mm -hmm. It is already at 72 degrees, so it's nice and cool in here. This one's the beast. It's just a direct, direct downdraft from about four feet away. <laughs> it cools this place off good. Well, that's pretty much ends it. Um, oh, the temperatures outside are 72, and earlier they were hotter than that. Humidity is about is at 34 percent, based on a weather underground uh, station, probably about half a mile from our house. Anyway, you guys take care. Have a good one. Hope you enjoyed it. Talk to you later.